Hello, welcome back again in Theater 2, in the classical laparoscopy room. We will present you, uh, present you a 75-year-old female patient with a distally urothelial cancer of the ureter with a hydronephrosis. Um, the, func uh, the function of the kidney is very bad with 11%. And we will see a laparoscopic nephroureterectomy with a bladder cuff of the right side performed by Professor Al uh, uh, Breda. I wish you a lot of fun. Hello. Hi. This is Christian Meyer speaking from Hamburg, and um, right beside me is um, Prof. Hohenferner. Hello. So, um, you got the case right. Uh, they presented the case already, right? Yes, um, they did this morning, I guess, but if you can recapture very quickly. That'd be awesome. Okay, so this is a lady uh, who she was diagnosed with uh, upper tract urinary cancer, uh, high grade uh, on the right ureter, approximately three to four centimeter in size. I think they already showed uh, the CT scan and the urography, um, and therefore she was scheduled uh, for a right nephroureterectomy. Also, she has uh, a, a very dilated system. Uh, and the kidney looks uh, very bad, so I don't think there's any function left on this kidney. So the way we will approach this uh, is uh, via a laparoscopic uh, radical nephroureterectomy. And the way I normally perform this uh, is uh, with a troker in a line position. Can, do we have a marker, a pen? There you go. Um, so I do it a little bit differently than uh, what regular and standard laparoscopy has been thought. So you see here is the siphoid. I don't know if we can get this uh, image. What, what image do you have in the audience? Uh, the camera or, or the outside camera? The outside camera, no. You have the no, it's actually the, uh, the normal camera, the, the endoscopy. The OK, so, yes. so uh, just to mark it, I want to show it to you. The, the head of the patient is here, so this is the xiphoid zyph that I just marked. This is the costal margin. Okay, costal margin. The liver will be somewhere in here. So this is going to be liver. The pararectal muscle is, uh, uh, the rectal muscle, muscle is here. And therefore, we have to work in this quadrant here. The way I normally work is with, with the camera port here at the very proximal part, close to the costal margin, then four finger breast, another one, and four finger breast, another one. Usually it's a, a five millimeter for the camera, five and five for the assistant, unless I'm doing, a, like in this case, for instance, a, a hemolox directly from here instead of from the incision, and then I place a 10 millimeter choker. Then what I like to do also is to mark the xiphoid uh, because since it's a right, uh, we will probably place uh, after, and I'll show you, an accessory trocar from here to elevate uh, the liver. Okay? So once this is done, then we can uh, make a small incision and uh, access the abdominal cavity via a um, visual, visual trocar. So now you see I'm inside a trocar and I focus on the tip of the choker. What is nice is that today we're using the 4K from, uh, uh, from storage, uh, and this is uh, really a superlative vision. I hope I will uh, be able to show you a nice case. So you see we make a, a real uh, small incision. This is a five millimeter incision. Look at my finger, really small incision. And, uh, and, uh, and from here, we just go in looking at the facial layers. Uh, since we access the cavity with uh, the Veres needle, I think it's very important uh, to go in uh, under vision and not blindly. So you see here there's the fascia, the muscle. We are expecting to see some fat, and then uh, the, the peritoneum, and we're in. And you see that the liver is right in here. So we are right on top of the liver, as we were expecting. So you see, this is the liver. Kidney is there, and then uh, we have the colon, uh, and down there, the bladder, okay? So now we switch directly 
to a 30 degree lens. Always check for the Veres needle. You see the Veres is here, so we didn't do any damage to the bowel. Um, but we always check for it, and then we connect our trocar. So now we switch to a 30 degree lens. The fact that uh, we are um, with the camera at the very top, then it obliges us. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say it obliges us. It's fine. I'm not going to use it again. Um, it obliges us to use a 30 degree. And that's what I like very much of any kind of kidney surgery. So the trocar position that I'm using uh, is the same trocar position for nephrectomy, partial nephrectomy, nephroureterectomy, donor nephrectomy, pyeloplasty, uh, and so on. So basically all the retroperitoneal surgery is performed uh, on this fashion. So now, <coughs> so now that we're in, I want just to show you the um, pararectal para line. So you see, this is the pubis bone, pubic bone, and the bladder is here. So you see, this is the rectus, this is the obliquus and the transverse, and this is right the pararectal line. Why is it important to enter the pararectal? Because down here, and I don't know if you can notice that, but you see the epigastric. So you want to stay lateral to the epigastric. So, um, incision? Okay, good. So we're using, as I said, the harmonic scalpel as well as, uh, um, as, as our energy dissector. And here, you know that the harmonica use, uses uh, just uh, um, is the ultracision, so ultrasonic uh, energy. I think it's a nice way, it's a nice dissector. I normally use... Uh, uh, the, the ligature or the end seal, which is a bipolar energy, but uh, is absolutely fine to use whatever you want, including monopolar uh, and bipolar. Come in. Vieni dentro. So you see we are dropping the color. Recuérdate de ponerme esto. Enséñame. Abras. So now we just drop the colon. Let's go up here. In cerca, Luis. So I'm just wondering, um, what's for you the uh, advantage of the inline trocar positioning, like um, pararectally instead of like a class, more classical um, trocar setting? Well, if you look at the outside view, I am uh, in a fantastic ergonomy. I don't have uh, the, the camera in between my arms, and I can uh, work uh, absolutely free. So it's uh, a little bit different than the standard fashion, which would be on a parallel, I'm sorry, on a triangular fashion. But uh, on a triangular fashion, you have uh, your uh, assistant uh, with, a hand, with, with his hand in between your hands. And with this one, you don't. So I think uh, ergonomically speaking, uh, it's much, much better, at least for me. I was trained like this at UCLA, and I think it's absolutely my standard goal. I, I teach my fellow this position, and I think it's, uh, it's absolutely nice. At least for me, it works. Okay, so now you see, look here. You see this is the dilated pelvis, okay? So um, the ureter is kinking over here and it's going all the way down. So one thing that we need to be very careful, although this, she is a very thin lady, but we don't want to injure the, inju the, the ureter. So one of the, the reasons why 
we're seeing more and more uh, literature on uh, whether we should or we shouldn't uh, do um, uh, laparoscopic uh, nephroureterectomies or laparoscopic or robotic cystectomies uh, is because there, they, some, you know, there are some evidence that uh, there might be um, uh, some uh, higher recurrence or, or metastasis, peritoneal metastasis. And I think that the majority of the times, uh, if you have the, such a seeding implantation is because you injure the ureter or you cut the lymph node, uh, and then it's a problem. So whenever we, we have an injury to the ureter that it can happen, then we convert to open. I don't know. No answer. Okay. Hi, Alberto. This is Marcus. Um, Let's go Alberto, all the way up. can you? Do you hear me? Yes, I do. Hi, Marcus. Ah, okay. Hi. Um, do you want to uh, explain a little bit about the risk of the CO2 and the seeding of metastasis in laparoscopy? If I want to do what? I'm sorry, Marcus. Explain uh, the role of the CO2 of the gas that yes. may be responsible for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that CO2 has a huge role in uh, in the seeding, uh, but yes, I think that if you have uh, 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 if you open a lymph node that is positive, or if you open the renal pelvis, uh, then CO2 may interfere. But more than CO2, I think, is the pressure that we are using. Uh, so if you use high pressure, then, of course, it's higher the risk of sitting. Um, despite this, I think that uh, if you are oncologically respect, respecting uh, 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 the templates, let's say, uh, so respect the ureter, respect the lymph nodes, uh, I don't think that laparoscopy is by any chances uh, uh, gives higher risk, or robotics, uh, higher risk of recurrence. I don't know what you think. Actually, I don't know. There are these data uh, which we know both from the MSKCC or uh, from their prospective randomized trial, uh, robotic cystectomy versus open, where they saw a little bit higher incidence of metastatic urocelial cancer in patients who had PT1 tumors. Uh, but I do not know if there's any further evidence beyond this in a randomized trial. I doubt. Uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, as you said, uh, there are studies uh, showing that, yes, there is an increase, uh, as well as study uh, published in European Neurology lately showing that, no, there's no increase. So it's very difficult uh, to say. I guess that, uh, again, it really matters uh, the selection of the patients uh, and the way you perform the surgery. Because uh, we do uh, seeding uh, and we do metastasis, uh, we do see metastasis in open cystectomies. So, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily think that there is an increase. Uh, as well as you respect, as much as you respect the, 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 the anatomy and the planes. So you see the adrenal gland here. So the reason why I dissected, hold, hold this, so the reason why I dissected uh, the triangular ligament of the liver is because now we will do a maneuver that you are all familiar with, uh, that is uh, um, lifting the liver up. So you see here that the gallbladder, liver, and uh, once we will have the liver lifted up, uh, then I think we will, uh, we will have a much better um, vision. Okay, so let me see, uh, let me have another choker. So we want to go as high as possible. That's why I marked the subfoid. And at this level, we just insert our trocker. Tiene una fascia esta que es durísima. Okay. Good. Perfect. So let's see if we can lift this up in a nice way. Okay. Okay, so we go all the way up to where we marked it. And we just anchor a little bit of, uh, okay, 
Vamos arriba. Okay. So now you see that, show, um, enséñale. Now you see that we have uh, all the kidney exposed. Uh, the upper pole is here. So the liver is well lifted. Uh, and now all we need to do is to go in little by little and uh, dissect all the planes, as you all know. So because this is a nephroureterectomy, uh, we will look carefully for um, the adrenal gland, and we will save the adrenal, save the adrenal gland, of course. So it's important uh, to look for the plane uh, between the kidney and the adrenal gland. Come here. See, the adrenal gland was somewhere in there. There's an artery here. And now we go all the way up. Small vessel. I mean, it's here. Not used to this. Suction. Let's see if we are fine with this. Puede venirme cerca. Give me another one. Sí. Can we fix the bipolar? Okay. Okay, guys, fix the bipolar because I cannot work without the bipolar, okay? Especially in this case because, uh, no, it's fine. Just give me, give me the end seal now. Alberto, just one question. Would sure. it have been an option to use Alberto? Yes. Yes, would it have been an option to use the ultracision to close this little artery instead of the bipolar? Sure, I tried, uh, but it was not working. I tried uh, I to see. use it, uh, but it was not working. So, you know, I'm... Uh, uh, I have to say that I stopped using the ultracision uh, almost five years ago, so now I'm so used to the ligature that, uh, you know, I might have uh, used the, the ultracision in the wrong way, because ultracision is really a good instrument. Uh, but, you know, it, we will make it happen. Don't worry. Uh, so here we have the plane uh, between the adrenal gland uh, and the kidney itself. So we will use this low button here, so it will seal the, the vessels, come closer. Vieni vicino, Luis. So the strategy that I use always in kidney surgery is to access the, the upper pole and to have all my upper pole free up until I see the, um, um, the um, psoas muscle, gira la optica, Luis. Okay, like in this situation. See, then the other nice thing of using the end seal or the ligature is that the tip of the instrument doesn't get hot as with the ultracision. So things like this doesn't happen. So here I had a little, uh, uh, you know, perforation of the muscle, which is not important. But uh, if you have a vessel, then you have to be careful. Come close here. Okay, so now we go little by little in this plane. And once we have all liberated, uh, then uh, it's becoming a safer surgery because all the upper part of the kidney is mobili mobilized. So in case something bad happens, uh, 
you don't have to worry about the IVC, you don't have to worry about anything other than place an endo-GIA in there and take the kidney out. Sometimes, you know, we forget that uh, bad things can happen in kidney surgery. Okay, so now all the upper pole is mobilized, you see nicely here, and the adrenal gland, we didn't even see it, but we know that it's down there. So we can use these instruments as dissectors. Eh? Yeah, so now we see the suprarenal gland over here, okay? The adrenal gland. So we just a couple of more bites and then we will go at the level of the lower pole just to lift everything up and expose the hilum, okay? So let's go back. El problema es que si me hubiera gustado. Okay, so now the upper pole is free. So I'm expecting to see my renal vein uh, somewhere in there. So let's go down here and dissect a little bit more of this renal pelvis. We have to be careful of the gonadal vein. Where is leaking? From here probably. Okay. The gonadal vein will be somewhere down there. And this, I said, it's, you know, the, the only, I would say, tricky part of the surgery here is to make sure that we don't injure the, um, the ureter or the collecting system. Because here is where we, 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 ha we may have problems uh, related to the sitting. There you go. So little by little, there's a little bit of inflammation. But the plane is separating nicely. And we want to get to the psoas muscle. So the ureter, we are elevating the ureter. Okay. The vessel in here. Alberto, you ever use a monopolar instrument on your right hand, a scissor or something? Look, there's an artery Hook. here, you see? You nice. see the artery? Here. Beautiful, yes. Okay. If I, if I use what? I'm sorry, my, uh, Marcus, sir? A monopolar instrument in your right hand, do you ever use it? A scissor or a hook? R rarely. I don't like monopolar energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me check, because it looks like there's an artery here, which will probably is the gonadal artery, but we will see. So you see the renal pelvis is having uh, this tortuosity that we were looking already at the CT scan, on the CT scan. Okay, so now we are going in, come in, viene, viene adentro, Luis, por favor, no demasiado. Okay, so now we're going towards the psoas muscle. Psoas muscle is there. Good. Move back. Uh huh. Good. The gonadal vein is there. We just saw it. And I'll show it to you in a second. Let me just get rid of this. Me here. Enseñame al central. Okay. Vamos aquí. Okay. Move, move here. 
Okay, so now we know that there is an artery here. We don't know yet where the vein is, but we need to be careful because where there's an artery, there's always a vein. So there might be the vein right there. In fact, I think that this is one vein, not the main vein, I would say, but one vein. So little by little, we'll go, see, there's a vein here and an artery. So let's see what we can do by lifting this up. Luis, tienes que entrarme un poco porque no veo nada. Okay, so here we have an hilum, no doubt, one artery and one vein. And we're marching up. Okay, let's see, go here. Let's, let me see here. So you see the fact that the upper pole is already dissected, uh, it gives me a lot. Um, ponme por favor. No, ves, ahora tienes que ir a las 12. Vale. Okay, so the IVC is here. Okay, you see the IVC there. So now it's just a matter of uh, little by little. See, the main uh, renal vein is here. I think you see it, right? That's the main renal vein. Yes, we do. Okay. So it's just a matter of going little by little now. Expose the hilum. And then we will take that um, artery and vein that we saw. And I think that the main artery is right in here. Okay? So it's a little bit anterior to the hilum. Okay, so the tip of the adrenal gland is there, and you see that there is the artery here. So this is one branch of the artery, no doubt. And that's the main, okay? So the main artery is there. Okay, let's see. Move back here, uh, vente aquí. Okay, vamos aquí. Retírate un poco. Uh -huh. So it's just a matter of elevation. And little by little, I use the, these instruments a lot, not this one, as I said already, but I use the, the sealants a lot to dissect the tissue. I think they are very nice dissectors. Let me see, okay. And also there was no real need to uh, mobilize the colon, right? I'm sorry? There was no real need for you to mobilize the colon to get to where you want to be. Well, I, I mobilized the colon a little bit, but not too much because uh, you don't need to mobilize it very much. Now this is, remember, this is an ureterectomy, so uh, we will need to take the ureter all the way down to the bladder and generate a bladder cuff. Now, the question to me is always the same. What do you do with a bladder cuff? How do you take the bladder cuff? Do you take it open? Do you take it robotically? Do you take it laparoscopically? And to me, the answer, whatever is easier for you. But remind, remember that you need to make an incision. So I think that the best way to take the bladder cuff and the safest way not to leave any residual uh, ureter in, which we know is very bad if it happens, uh, is to do it open. So when I do an FRU, I do like today, I do this part laparoscopically and then the bladder cuff is always open for me. What do you, what do, you do? I, I think this is such a nice, honest statement, Alberto. Uh, we do exactly the same and the bladder cuff uh, needs to be complete for the ureteral orifice, and I also think it's the safest way. Good. So we agree in something. Maybe not the first time. Yeah. See, the reason why I don't like very much the ultra -season, uh, uh not that I don't like it, I shouldn't say things like this, but uh, the reason why 
it's not my favorite instruments is because of all of this foggy uh, in vision. Uh, and even if you try to open uh, the ports or use the pump, maybe we can use the pump from, from uh, Carl Storz uh, and see if uh, with the pedal uh, we get less of this uh, annoying uh, vision. This doesn't happen with the other sealers, such que estás totalmente girado, Luis. Okay, vamos atrás. All right, so we're getting close to the end, meaning that uh, we have here to find nice the artery, which I think we know where it is, but uh, uh, we want to see it better. Come closer. Alberto, yeah. what about the lymphadenectomy? That's a good question. So listen, um, I don't know. Uh, the evidence is there for high grade, uh, not for low grade. And also, uh, I think it depends very much also on the um, position of the tumor and on the age of the patient. Uh, but I don't think there's a correct answer. I think that lymphadenectomy sh should be performed uh, as much as possible. Uh, mira abajo, polo inferior as much as possible, um, although I'm not sure if uh, in a lady like this uh, I would do it, but uh, I have no problem in taking some of the lymph nodes out. The question is, uh, the tumor is in the, um, um, dame un, uh, give me a dissector, please. Uh, the tumor is in the ureter, so what would you take as template? Is in the mid ureter, would you take the mid aortica, uh, would you take the inter aortocaval? So that's a little bit of an issue that I have with the lymphadenectomy. But yes, the answer, I, I would say the lymphadenectomy in high grade, certainly. In massive high grade, certainly. Okay, give me, uh, uh, I will, no, dame, si dame esta? I'm sorry, I'm talking to Spanish, English, I, I, I don't know what I'm talking now. Okay, uh, give me hemolox. So we will take, no, 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 large or medium. So we will take this artery down. One, another one. Two. Give me a scissor or the ultracision, the ultracision. My educated guess would be that we have to follow with the lymphadenectomy the blood supply of the ureter. Mm -hmm. So for the mid ureter, you would take a the para aortic. I, 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 I also would include the hyalur lymph nodes of the kidney. Mm -hmm. Hemolock. I'm sorry for the interruption, but yes, uh, so we were saying lymphadenectomy. Patient 75, negative CT scan. Uh, would you do it, would you not do it? And you said yes. And then uh, you have to tell me, though, Marcus, uh, on the right, uh, what template you would take, because the the blood supply of the mid ureter is coming from uh, the mid aorta and maybe from something on the proximal uh, renal artery. So uh, certainly the hyalur lymph nodes, uh, but then would you also go inter aorto cava? Of no, of course I would not, except if uh, we would have any evidence. I guess it's, I, I actually don't know if it's, uh, curative thing to take the lymph nodes, but I would guess maybe it's important for the staging. Sure. Uh, it depends how fit, the, how fit the patient is. If she is a very mm -hmm. fit yes. lady who would tolerate a systemic therapy, maybe yes. But if the systemic therapy would not be an option anyhow, so maybe not. 
I tell you what, the, the lady looks like if she was 90, but she's 76. Uh, the other thing okay. is that her, her GFR is in this moment 60. So probably once we take this kidney out, uh, the GFR will be low 60. And so would you give cisplatinum to her? And the answer is probably no. You would give carboplatinum, knowing that carboplatinum is not as effective as cisplatinum. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know the answer, uh, to be honest with you. In this lady. I guess, I guess we agree once again and come to the conclusion that the lymph nodes can stay in. Good. Okay, so now we are really at the end. So we need uh, just to dissect a little bit more. Now, one thing that I like very much, and I always have it ready in my room, is the endogia, because if something goes wrong here, you can certainly uh, use the endogia and take everything and block. I know it's uh, a little bit expensive, so uh, you know you don't need uh, to use it all the times. But it's uh, nice to have it in the room. Uh, probably not today, hopefully not today, but uh, nice to have it in the room. Do you use Imoloc or endogia in kidney surgery? Um, Alberto, I think you can use the endogia. You are here in East Germany and they have really big budgets. <laughs> they have money. They have the money that we don't have in Spain. Good. <laughs> All right, so I think that the artery is right in here. So we can clean it. One thing that is very important, uh, and I know that uh, many of you knows it, but uh, not very many stress, uh, the fact that if we're using Hemolog, uh, we need to clean very well the artery. The Hemologs can slip very easily. Uh, that's why they were forbidden in donor's nephrectomy, for instance. Uh, uh, and uh, and so, so we need to be careful uh, when we are addressing the artery, because of course, uh, like now, for instance, it's a clean artery, okay? So now I feel comfortable um, using uh, the Hemolox here. So now give me the Hemolox. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky position of uh, the, the artery. So one trick is just to stay on parallel to the artery. You go in, you open, you rotate, and now you move it down. And boom, and the artery is taken. Now, if you have difficulties, oh, come on. Uh, somebody has to look at this. OK, good. Maybe it's me that I have to look at this. OK, come back. So one thing that is nice is that at times, uh, if you have difficulties, uh, uh, you just place a clip on the artery, you cut the vein, and then you go back to the artery. So in this situation, I think we're safe enough. We placed two hemologs on the stay side, and then we'll place uh, another hemolog on, um, on the kidney. And I think that that's more than enough. So, no, 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 ultra -season, I have it, so give me scissors. Okay. All right, so now I think that this is all good to go. Hemolock. Another one. See, I have always the same question uh, to the people, and uh, 
uh, give me the platypus, the fenestrated. Um, so it's always the same, you know, there's people arguing, uh, yes, you save money uh, if you use Hemolog. But I would say that had I used the Endo GIA, I, I would have been finished uh, uh, five to ten minutes ago. So in Germany, do you, uh, give me another Hemolog, please, do you calculate uh, the time of the OR time? Is it something that is important? Maybe not 10 minutes, Alberto, um, at least not at you our see, institution, but we, there may be different op uh, opinions. You see, you see, we don't agree in everything. All right, so this part is done. So move back, now, uh, vamos abajo. Let's see if we can clean the image a little bit. So now the next question is, uh, how far do, you, do, do we want to go with the ureter dissection? Because if we're going to do it open, uh, probably I would go right, normally what I do, I go right to, um, to the iliac vessels uh, and then I stop the nephro-u and I open. Okay, so now we go lateral. Luis, me puedes poner central? On a very different note, um, I know there are um, a couple of young urologists uh, in the audience as well. And I was wondering, because it was, you were talking about um, how you got your training at UCLA and how you learned that very fashion, um, how do you approach like teaching your fellows and your residents? Uh, is there any curriculum or do they do any steps at, uh, at a given time? Um, uh, what, what do you think about that? Or what's your opinion? Well, you know, all the, the fellows, uh, uh, they Unfortunately, there's no curriculum, uh, so per se, uh, but there is, a, there is a, uh, actually, um, you know, all the steps that they do with the Europe. Uh, um, and then uh, in our institution, uh, all the residents and fellow, they have a very nice training center, um, which is something that I really think is crucial. Uh, before they start uh, laparoscopy or robotic. Uh, so we have all the symbionics uh, uh, instruments uh, and we can do uh, very nicely the, the, the steps of the surgery with them. So I think uh, it's something that it's very important uh, for them to realize that uh, before they can get to humans, uh, they need to train uh, uh, at least uh, in, the, in the models, animal or um, uh, dry lab. <coughs> And then um, if, if they operate on, on humans, do they normally do like certain steps at a time or yes. do you have something like pr uh, procedural equivalents or do, do they do, you know, like the, the first steps or w what exactly is your, is your point? Do, can, can they do any steps at, at any point of time or do they have to master like, I don't know, like the freeing of the kidney for the first 10 cases or something or is, 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 there, is there any guideline at sure. your institution? Sure. What we normally do is that... Uh, they start with the colon dissection. And so the, in kidney surgery, they start with the colon dissection. They need to get familiar with the instruments. Uh, um, and then they, they uh, little by little, they go to the upper pole, uh, to the lower pole, come in, lower pole. And then in the end, once they have uh, enough confidence, and usually that happens uh, uh, resident number, uh, year number five uh, or fellows, uh, then uh, uh, they do the entire nephrectomy. Normally, we do not um, we do not let uh, fellows or residents uh, uh, performing a partial nephrectomy. Uh, I know we might be a little bit ret retrograde in fashion, but I think partial nephrectomy is a surgery that it's uh, um, uh, very 
uh, difficult. So unless it's really a small partial, uh, uh, the majority of the partials are done by the attendings and not by the residents or fellows. And then for cystectomy, um, when we do it open, and we still do a lot of cystectomy open, uh, then of course uh, the, that, the, the, the training is absolutely different because uh, we are there, so we let them operate very much. Uh, um, what they don't get exposed to at Fundacion Puigvert is to open prostatectomy. We don't do open prostatectomy any longer, so we're still doing a lot of uh, laparoscopic prostatectomies. Uh, um, and I have to say that uh, the year number five, uh, the residents are, are able to perform a, a laparoscopic prostatectomy. Um, and then for kidney transplantation, uh, um, since I use a, you know, a, 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 a technique where I can, oops, there's a little bleeder there. Let's see what it is. Since I used a technique where I can, uh, um, let me see, just a second, where the assistant can really do part of the anastomosis, uh, then the resident uh, from year number three, they get to do the vascular anastomosis. They, they are part, let's say, of the vascular anastomosis, their side. Well, the question here in the room is uh, whether we should or we shouldn't place a clip now in the ureter. Uh, and the question is, I'm not sure 100% where the tumor is. So if I knew that the tumor was here, yes, I would place a clip. See, uh, dame, le, give me, give me um, the, see, I think we have to clip the gonadal because there's a little bit of a bleeder in here. Let me see. Okay, let's see. Good, good. Eh? Si no coagula, este, este es horroroso. Give me two Imolox, small, uh, big ones. So there's a little bit of a bleeder of the gonadal vein, so I will take, me enseñas Luis, por favor? Gracias. One, keep. Okay. Let's go. Good. So now suction. I have the elephant for the obesity. So that's the long one. And I cannot even. But it's fine. We will manage it. Here it is. So I think that the tumor is here. Because in the CT scan and in the urography, it's where it looks like it is. Come closer. So we clean this. And then I think we are ready to go with uh, open extraction. OK, let's go here. Give me a normal. Uh, Forcep. Good. Okay. Reverse. So here I'm very low, so I'm at, I'm the, I'm, I am, or re, can we retract the trocar a little bit? Can you push the trocar back a little bit? Thank you. Okay, so here I'm really at the level of the iliac vessels, okay? The iliac artery is right there. You see it? That's the iliac. So I don't think we need to do much more here, because we have already dissected everything, the kidney is already dissected, and here is where now the open part will take will take place. Uh, we can struggle a little bit more in here if we want to, but uh, it's not really going to help us uh, any more 
because really we are down there. So now it's just a matter of uh, 20 minutes. Uh, we open, uh, we make all, more than that, the patient had uh, already an incision for an, um, an appendectomy. And so I think that here is bowel there. Um, we go down there, we take care of the ureter and we will use the, the camera maybe to show you um, to show you the inside part, part of the surgery if you still want to see something. But I think it's crucial, again, to everybody who does nephroureterectomy to have a good bladder cuff. I really don't like uh, uh, people that do laparoscopic uh, extraction uh, of the nephroureter because uh, I have to say that uh, yet I have to see a very well bladder cuff in a laparoscopic excision. The majority of the times uh, I see surgeons that they go down there and they say, all right, she's 75, we just uh, staple the ureter close to the bladder and who cares? And I think it's, that's a huge mistake. See the iliac artery is here. I think that's a huge mistake uh, because then is where when, when we see the recurrences uh, and then we take care and then it's difficult uh, to go in there uh, and, and, uh, and resect uh, the distal portion of the ureter of a patient that has been already operated. So I think it has to be done in a good way um, and, uh, and safely. Okay, so now everything is off. So the ureter, you see, you follow all the ureter. So I don't think there's uh, <coughs> anything else we should do. We just uh, bring the, the, the kidney down and uh, we put it right at the level of where we want to make the incision. So now we just need uh, to clean the, the field a little bit. We just wash a little bit here and there, and then we will open. So we will uh, open now. We want to check that the liver is fine. Okay, good. So liver is fine, under control. We come out, good. No bleeding, no bleeding, no bleeding. Fine, 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 fine. Okay, so now we mark, this is the kidney, okay? And we mark the incision side. The incision side will be right from my trocar down to the pubic bone. And it will be like a seven centimeter, eight centimeter incision. Okay, hold it like that. Like this. So you see, now the pubic bone is here, okay? And, and I really want to go pararectal. There you go. That's going to be my incision, which I would do in any case to take the specimen out. Bug bin? No, no, bug bin. And a couple of gauzes. Do we have the retractor that I was asking for before? Yes. Good. Uh, show it to me. Mm -hmm. te coges una pinza me ayudas un poco porque Okay, so, espera, uh, hay un punto. Yeah, so first of all, let me show the people. The, do I have a, a, a triangle? Uh, all right, there you go. So this is the kidney, okay? So we have the kidney in here. 
a big gauge. So we place it inside a gauge. And we have our ureter in here. So now I need uh, um, wet gauges, the big ones. And then the retractor, do we have it here somewhere? Ah, OK. Uh, well, maybe it's going to work. I will see. OK. So now we place a couple of gauges to separate the, the bowels. Another one. And another one, OK? Okay. Okay. Let's see. It's super big. We are used to have the. Yeah, a little, little. We're used to have the book Walter to do this surgery, but I think that this retractor is also good. Remember? The only problem with this retractor is that it doesn't have handles, so it's nice. Dame, can we have another? So, goes. Here it is. Good. And good. Mm -hmm. A suction. Do we have suction? Good. Dissector. No, I need deep ones. Deep, deep. See? Okay, yes. Deep. Or even deeper. Let's see. Okay, like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have the long one? Um, yes. Insert? In Zetten? Do you see something? Emolok? Actually not. Uh, we, uh, now, yes. Okay. Can we clean the lens because it's all foggy? Give me another one, a long one. So we are getting uh, exactly, a, well, yes, this one, but I need a long retractor, this one. Like that, okay, good, do I have it? And longer uh, the becky. So we are getting exactly what I want to, so Little by little. Si puedes probar a ver si lo puedes enganchar. Espera un segundo, espera. Así, eso es. Ya está. Okay. Did you feel the bladder? Yeah, I have. I am at the bladder there, but um, I want to dissect a little bit more to show you. But I am. Um, it's very sticky here. When did the When did the lady at the ureteroscopy? You know that? No, we don't actually here. Um, One month ago. It's very sticky. But we will get there. I was asking if if you already filled the bladder, like. If I already or what? Filled the bladder. No, like. I didn't. Uh, 
I, I feel it at the very end because uh, I know okay. uh, uh, I want to see at the very end. Right now I'm uh, in the Val Dyer tract and there's two more. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure 100% that okay. uh, I in fact reject all, all I need. Let me here hold this for a second. Just let me go in with my hand for a second. I want to feel where I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have all the tumor in my hand. So the tumor was very low. So the answer to, to you guys before where we were asking whether we should have or should have not clamped the, uh, clipped the ureter, I think is no, we should have not because the tumor is very low. Uh, right now I have my finger right inside the bladder, basically. Sí, dame una gasa. Suction. It's here. I just saw it. It's a little... I see nothing with this retractor. It's probably here. Yeah, there you go. It's there. It's one of those uh, pubic. There it is. A small artery, can, it's fine, now we have it. Okay, okay. No, it's not okay, not yet, at least. I don't see anything. Así, tenemos. No, está abajo ahí. It's, it's down there. No veo nada. I don't see it. It's just that uh, it's a small vessel. I see the vessel, but I cannot get to there. What is this now? Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, see. Give me an hemolock. Yeah. It's the vesicle, superior vesicle. Mm -hmm. see. Aspira, 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 bien ahí. Aspira. Está ahí. Otro. Another one? Yes, yes, yes. Ilia está arriba. Esta es la superior. We are we are at the level of the superior vesicle, and I think I think there was a little bit of. A ah, it's over. Okay. Now we have it. Good. There's still a little bit of. A Bleeding from there, but uh, not much. Oh, there you go. I see it. I think now it's fine. Let's see. I think that now it's fine. Okay. Oh, there's still something there. But this I probably can get it with this. Okay, let's go. Let's see. 
No, it's right there. Dame. Give me. Do you have metallic clips? Hay una venita pequeña. Inspírame ahí, por favor, porque no veo nada. Ok, sí. Let me open just a little bit more. Una, una pinza, por favor. Una pinza. Um, yeah. Déjame ver qué hay aquí porque estoy tan... No, no, estás justo arriba. Okay. I don't know what she has, but uh, dame, dame una, una, Imolok, Imolok, this one, yes. It's all, this is not working. Here, okay, let's see if we can see something now. Aspira? I need to see this, okay, because that's the bladder. Still bleeding. Está sangrando algo nuevamente. No me lo creo. Nuevamente. ¿Qué es que sangra? Sí, pero es increíble. No, no, let me see first. La, déjame que separe esta. Sí. sí, lo veo. Dame Emolok. ¿En mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So. Can uh, we now go and uh, with um, no? No, me otro. Nada de Emolok. No, esta esta parece más. Sí, son venitas, pero está sangrando. No. Que va. Yo no creo. Vale, vamos a ver. ¿Sigue o no? Bueno, little. Ok. No, no. I think now we are at the level of what we want to be. So now... Book Walter, eh? My friend Book Walter, where are you? I can see anything in here. Es que nadie está, está ayudando a, la, a nadie en el sentido que no hay ningún tipo de retracción. Estamos a la vejiga aquí, ¿eh? porque esta es la vejiga. Pero bueno. Do we have the ultra season? Okay. 
So let's go here. Let's see. This is so hot. Yo no sé qué está sangrando tanto, pero. Give me a big hemolock. Big. Esta es la vejiga que está sangrando porque tiene está hipervascularizada. El problema es que no, no consigo entrar. Ok. Si me ayudas con una valva de... Uh, we need some help with the retraction and then uh, we will uh, finally... Because we are right at the bladder, but there is uh, a vessel in there that is killing me. And there is no way that with this retraction I can get to it. Because I'm at the pubis bone here, so there's no way I can get deeper. And she looks thin, but she's very deep. So, do we have a thin one? No, thin. Thin, thin yes. Yeah, they, they don't have the same one. Yeah, 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 there's. Now, give me, give me now a... a the separator that you had before this one. No, longer. Okay, like that. Good. Let me see here. Puede ser, o oh, sí. No, es la parte posterior, sí, pero la parte posterior del colon. Tíratelo atrás ahí. Sí, por esto estoy, estoy ahí. Lo que pasa es que está todo. Entonces, now, um, pinceta and, and, and ligature or end seal, whatever it is. So now we need to take care of this. Sí, es vejiga, pero mira donde, donde hay aquí algo. ¿Ves cómo está calcífico todo? Por esto yo te estoy diciendo que aquí hay pasado algo. ¿Puedes con una pinza tenérmelo así? So this is the end of the tumor. Dame, give me an hemolock now. Yeah. Sí, sí, lo sé, lo sé, lo sé. Big one, eh? Okay, so now we place a clip in here. Okay. And now the bug. Fuera, fuera, fuera el aspirador. Okay, so now we see the ureter there. Yo creo que esta es la vejiga. So now I need vicryl, creo vicryl, because we are in the bladder now. Espera un segundo. So this is the bladder. Ok, no veo Luis con la, con la óptica. Finally, this is the detrusor muscle. Ok, so give me one of these. So now at this point is where we place a suture in here in the bladder.
Okay, so you can clean the camera. One, with the mosquito. No, no, lo sé, lo sé. Pero, ¿qué puedo hacer? <laughs> si estamos... Uh, Is the patient a fatty patient, Alberto? Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know, it's... Uh, she has uh, had something for sure. Dame, uh, can I have a, um, a wet goes? And the fact that I don't have a good retraction, uh, not because of the of the assistance, uh, is because uh, this retract this retractor they don't go deep, uh, and I cannot separate the bowel nicely or the 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 things that I'm used to separate in a normal way. But I will we will see. We are certainly there now. So all this um, dissection, meaning uh, the bug bin. Do we have an Alice? Hmm? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, yeah, no, I'm telling you, it's like painful. Look at this. Give me a suture. No, no, I know. I'm telling you that it's bothering me so much. Pinza, pinza. Alguien tiene puede mantener este. Aspira un segundo, que vea. Can here. Okay, let go, let go, put it. Action, light, better. Better than any of the cojones. Dame una pinza, una tijera, uh, uh, scissor. I need another suture. Huh? Uh huh. So just just for you to to see the end of the surgery, I'm sorry that uh, it was not a beautiful one this part. But uh, I don't know this uh, this one. This lady was uh, absolutely uh, I don't know what to say. But uh, we are at the detrusor muscle up, uh, out, and this is the open bladder. So we are at the cuff finally. Um, so. Dr. Pansadoro told me that you have the presentation now, and so I think, you know, this is just the end of it. If you want, uh, we can say goodbye and uh, close for the day, because I think the day is over. Okay, so we're inside the bladder there, no doubt, and, uh, and we're done. So finally, we I, made I it. Beato, thank you. Thank you very, very much for this presentation. Okay. As usual, we saw a, a beautiful Please. laparoscopic procedure, and I think it's just fair to see uh, an open surgery, which is not so easy as anticipated. I, but in I the I just end, want to show you, very good. Marcus. Uh, before you stop, I just, I just want to show you if you. For, uh, by, uh, quita el aspirador. If you if you go in, you see the bladder. So this is the bladder we see open. Perfect. So okay. it it's a very good, very good result. Okay, good. So thank perfect. you very much. See you later, Alberto. See you later.